Human Resource Management Human Resource Management An Introduction and Scope 2. Job Design and Job Analysis 3. Training and Development 4. Performance Measurement and Performance Appraisal 5. Leadership and Grievance 6. Discipline 7. 8. Employee Compensation Key Terms and Terminologies Human Resource Management 5. And Lecture 1. Bibliography 2. Solved Question Paper 3. Multiple Choice Questions 67 68, 82 83, 85, 6. Syllabus. Objectives To become a successful manager of people, students need to understand behavior of human resources in various organizational situations. In a complex world of industry and business, organizational efficiency is largely dependent on the contribution made by the human resources of the organization. The objective of this course is to sensitize students to various facts of managing people and to create an understanding of the various policies and practices of human resource management. Section The Human Resource Management Introduction and Scope HRD Concept Need Human Resource Planning Concept Process Job Design Concept Approaches Job Analysis Job Description Job Specification Human Resource Procurement Recruitment Selection and induction. Training. Training phases. Need assessment. Establishment. Establishment of training objectives. Training method lecture. Case method. Role playing. Business in basket T. Group. Incident. Syndicate. Evaluation of a training program. Performance measurement. T and reward systems introduction. Performance drivers. Leadership and performance. Reward management performance appraisals. Discipline. The grievance procedure. Employee Compensation Purpose and Importance Components Non-Monetary Rewards Workers' Participation in Management Employee Strategic Challenges for Leadership Career Management SHRM Mergers and Acquisitions Section B Case and Problems Dean Rajasthan Technical University Kota Flash 2008-2009 Flash Profit Surendra Kumar Bias Chairman Boss Department of Management and Technology Engineering College Beaconair Human Resource Management 7. Chapter 1. Human Resource Management An Introduction and Scope Q.1 What is Human Resource Management? A and S. Human Resource Management HRM is the process of managing people in organizations in a structured and thorough manner. This covers the fields of staffing, hiring people, retention of people, pay and perks setting and management, performance management change management and taking care of exits from the company importance of human factor one dot output will be greater than the input to dot each individual is different from culture education environment background etc three we can't purchase the loyalty dedication devotion towards the organization for dot time passes human factor can bring experience to organization to accept the challenges five recent developments like legislation trade unions enhance their importance Apart from above factors there are certain other factors that one should consider in the management of human resource such as 8. Q.2 Explain the difference between personnel management and HRM. A and S. Dimensions Beliefs and Assumptions 1. Contract 2. Rules 3. Guide to Management Action 4. Behavior Reference 6. Nature of Relations Strategic Aspects. Personnel Management. HRM. Careful delineation of written contracts Importance of devising clear rules slash mutually procedures norms slash custom and practice pluralist Aim to go beyond contract can do outlook Impatience with rule business need values slash mission universe Human resource management 8 Key relations 9 Initiatives 11 Speed of decision line management 12 Management role 13 Key managers 14 Communication 16 Management Skills Key Levers 17 Selection 18 Pay 19 Conditions 21 Thrust of Relations with Stewards Separate Marginal Task Job Evaluation Fixed Grades Separately Negotiated Regularized Through Facilities and Training Integrated 
Key task performance related harmonization marginalized with exception of some bargaining for change models few increased flow teamwork transactional personnel slash IR specialists in direct negotiation transformational leadership general slash business slash line managers direct facilitation labor management piecemeal slow customer integrated fast 9 22 job categories and grades 23 communication 24 job design Many restricted flow division of labor. 10Q3 Discuss the nature and scope of HRM. The NS. 1. Organizations are the people who manage. 2. HRM involves acquisitioning, developing, maintaining 3. Decisions relating to employees must be integrated. 4. Decisions made must influence the effectiveness of an organization. 5. HRM functions are confirmed to non business organization also. Scope of HRM Nature of HRM Employee Hiring Prospects HRM Industrial Relation Remuneration Motivation Maintenance Human Resource Management Q for what is the significance of human resource development HRD The NS Human Resource Development HRD is an essential component for growth and economic development. It can occur at both the nationwide level and the firm-wide level. The need and importance of HRD can be measured from the following points. Growth of organization. Growth of organization is associated with the development of its 11. Workforce. In changing situation HRD must be viewed as the total system interrelated and interacting with other systems at work, production, finance, and marketing. Development of work culture. The need of HRD is felt as it improves the efficiency of employees, checks monotony at work, better communication, development of mutual cooperation and creativity of all the members comes into limelight. Developing potentialities, the focus of HRD manager essentially is on enabling people to self-actualize through a systematic approach by which their existing talents are further developed. Growth of employees, HRD is associated with growth of employees. It helps employees to know their strengths and weaknesses and enable them to improve their performance. The management should provide adequate opportunity for the development of human resource management for the development of their talents so that their development will benefit the organizational growth. Country develops if the human resource is developed. To enhance economic development the state constructs roads, buildings, bridges, dams, powerhouses, hospitals, etc. to run these units doctors, engineers, Scientists, teachers, are required. So if the state invests in the human resource it pays dividend in response. Entrepreneurship increase. Education, clean environment, good health, investment on the human resource, will all have its positive effects. Job opportunities would be created in the country. And even business environment will flourish in the state which creates many job opportunities. Q.5 What is human resources planning and also explain its components. The NS. B.W. Better viewed human resources planning as a process by which an organization should move from its current manpower position to its desired manpower position. Through planning management strives to have the right number and right kind of people at the right places at the right time, doing things which result in both the organization and the individual receiving maximum long-run benefit. According to Lee and C. Metginson Human Resources Planning is an integrated approach to performing the planning aspects of the personnel function in order to have a sufficient supply of adequately developed and motivated people to perform the duties and tasks required to meet organizational objectives and satisfy the individual needs and goals of organizational members. Components of Human Resource Planning Comprises 12. Estimating manpower requirement workload analysis workforce analysis absenteeism labor turnover recruitment and selection induction and development personnel development ensuring quality to products and services overall assessment and performance and fine tuning Q.6 discuss the process of human resource planning 1. Analyzing the corporate level strategies human resource planning should start with analyzing corporate level strategies which include expansion, diversification, mergers acquisitions, reduction in operations, technology to be used, method of production etc. Therefore human resource planning should begin with analyzing the corporate plans of the organization before setting out on fulfilling its tasks. 2. Demand forecasting, 
forecasting the overall human resource requirement in accordance with the organizational plans is one of the key aspects of demand forecasting. Forecasting of quality of human resources like skills, knowledge, values and capabilities needed in addition to quantity of human resource. RCs is done through the following methods. A executive or managerial judgment. Here the managers decide the number of employees in the future. They adopt one of the three approaches mentioned below, the bottom-up approach. Here the concerned supervisors send their proposals to the top officials who compare these with the organizational plans, make necessary adjustments and finalize them. Top-down approach. Here the management prepares the requirements and sends the information downwards to the supervisory level who finalizes the draft and approves it. Participative approach. Here the supervisors and the management sit together and projections are made after joint consultations. So, oh, the chief drawback of these methods is that estimation of manpower is made using guesswork. B. Statistical techniques. These methods use statistical methods and mathematical techniques to forecast and predict the supply and demand of human resources in the future. Human resource management. 13. C. Ratio trend analysis. In this method depending on the past data regarding number of employees in each department, like production department, sales department, marketing department and workload level, etc. ratios for manpower are estimated. Past values are plotted and extrapolated to get fairly accurate future projections. The work study method. This technique is suitable to study the correlation between volume of work and labor i.e. demand for human resources is estimated based on the workload. Work study method is more appropriate for repetitive and manual jobs when it is possible to measure work and set standards. The Delphi Technique Delphi Technique is named after the Greek oracle of the city of Delphi. In this method, the views of different experts related to the industry are taken into consideration and then a consensus about the human resource requirement is arrived at. Delphi Technique is used primarily to assess long-term needs of human resource. 3. Analyzing Human Resource Supply Every organization has two sources of supply of human resources, internal and external. Internally, human resources can be obtained for certain posts through promotions and transfers. In order to judge the internal supply of human resources in future human resource inventory or human resource audit is necessary. Human resource inventory helps in determining and evaluating the quantity of internal human resources available. Once the future internal supply is estimated, Supply of external human resources is analyzed. For estimating manpower gaps, manpower gaps can be identified by comparing demand and supply forecasts. Such comparison will reveal either deficit or surplus of human resources in the future. Deficit suggests the number of persons to be recruited from outside, whereas surplus implies redundant employees to be redeployed or terminated. Employees estimated to be deficient can be trained while employees with higher Better skills may be given more in rich jobs. 5. Action Planning Once the manpower GAPS are identified, plans are prepared to bridge these gaps. Plans to meet the surplus manpower may be redeployment in other departments and retrenchment. People may be persuaded to quit voluntarily through a golden handshake. Deficit can be met through recruitment, selection, transfer and promotion. In view of shortage of certain skilled employees. The organization has to take care not only of recruitment but also retention of existing employees. Hence, the organization has to plan for retaining of existing employees. 6. Modify the organizational plans. If future supply of human resources form all the external sources is estimated to be inadequate or less than the requirement, the manpower planner has to suggest to the management regarding the alterations or modifications in the organizational plans. 7. Controlling and review. After the action plans are implemented, human resource structure and the processes should be controlled and reviewed with a view to keep them in accordance with action plans. 14. Case study. How FCO meet business needs through human resource planning. The staffing needs of an organization change constantly. Without proper planning, an organization may suffer from skills shortages. It may be unable to provide a good service because it does not have sufficient staff with the right experience. Workforce planning involves estimating the present and future staffing requirements of the organization. It needs to take into account that existing employees may retire, 
resign or get promoted. New technology may change working methods and require different skill sets. More staff or staff with different skills may be needed to fulfill new business or operational requirements. The process helps the FCO to identify what skills it needs to deliver its strategic objectives. It helps it assess the skills available within the existing workforce and see where there might be gaps in the future. Workforce planning involves thinking ahead to fit individuals with the right skills into different parts of the organization. The FCO has to undertake this planning in the context of the current political and economic environment. Workforce planning can be a challenge. As an organization with operations in countries across the world, the FCO has to ensure balanced workloads for employees both within the UK and overseas. It faces the challenge of rotating staff between different overseas postings. Human Resource Management 15. Chapter 2 Job Design and Job Analysis Q.1 What is Job Analysis? A.N.S. Job analysis is the formal process of identifying the content of a job in terms of activities involved and attributes needed to perform the work and identifies major job requirements. In other words, it means the procedure for determining the duties and skill requirements of a job and the kind of person who should be hired for it. The process of job analysis results in two set of data, III. Job description A list of jobs, duties, responsibilities, reporting relationships, working environment and supervisory responsibility. Job specification A list of jobs, human requirements, that is requisite e.g. usation, skills, personality and so on. Q2 What is job description? A and S. The job description should include the following. Job title. Clarifies the position, rank or level if applicable. Job location. It includes the physical location of the job, the days and hours of the position, and includes any potential overtime that may be required to perform the job. Goals and objectives. It includes goals and objectives the incumbent should be accomplishing in its job. Position reports to Koalan it includes those persons who the employee should report to i.e. the boss of the job holder immediate level subordinates. The job description also includes the subordinates of the job holder. Machines, tools and equipments used. It includes those machines and tools which will be used by the job holder in order to perform his duties. Key responsibilities. The key responsibilities section of your job description should give clear and unambiguous detail of the main tasks that your employee is accountable and responsible for. Core skills. The core skills section of a job description are those minimum skills and experience that the incumbent will need to perform the job in a professional and responsible manner for your business. 16. Authority limits. The employee should know his authority limits. He shouldn't go beyond his authority limits. Working environment. It includes the kind of environment in which the job holder will work. Hazards. The hazards involved in performing the job is also included in it. Q.3 What is job specification? A and S. It includes the following. Quantitative factors. Age, sex, education, professional qualification, experience special qualification, languages, marital status, vehicle ownership, achievement in other fields, intelligence. Character traits, stability, industrious, loyalty, self-reliance, leadership, job motivation, money, security, status, power, perfection, competitiveness, service, recognition, degree of emotional maturity, incapacity of self-dependence, disregard of consequences, selfishness, pleasure-mindedness, unwillingness to accept responsibility. Q.4 Explain the types of information to be collected by job analysis. A and S. Work activities. Information is usually collected on the actual work activities such as cleaning, selling, teaching or painting. Such a list may also indicate how, why, and when the worker performs each activity. Human behaviors. Information on human being like sensing, communication, decision making and writing may also be collected. Human resource management. Machines, tools, equipment and work aids used. Computers, hardware and software, safety equipment, goggles and gloves, office tools, phones, fax and books. 17. Types of information to be collected by job analysis. Work performance, work measurements, I.E. Time taken, work standard error analysis. Job context, physical working conditions, work schedule, organized context, social context, incentives, financial and non-financial. Personal requirements. 
job-related knowledge or skills such as education, training or work experience required personal attributes such as aptitudes, physical characteristics, personality, interests required. Job analysis and competitive advantage laying the foundation for human resource planning. Laying the foundation for employee hiring. Laying the foundation for training and development. Laying the foundation for performance appraisal. Laying the foundation for salary and wage fixation. Laying the foundation for safety and wealth. 18. Q.5 Explain the process of job analysis. A and S. Human Resource Management. 19. Q6 What are the methods for collecting job data? A and S. Observation. In this method, the job analyst carefully observes the job holder at work and records what he or she does, how he or she does, and how much time is needed for completion of a given task. Interview In this, the analyst interviews the job holder and his slash her supervisor to elicit information about the job questionnaire. Job holder fills in the given structured questionnaires, which are then approved by their supervisors. The filled-in questionnaires offer enough data on jobs checklists. Checklist is similar to a questionnaire, but the response sheet contains fewer subjective judgments and tends to be either yes or no variety. Technical conference method. In this method, the details of job are obtained by the supervisors who possess extensive knowledge about a job. Diary method. In this method, the job holders are required to record in detail their activities of each day. 20. Quantitative techniques position and analysis questionnaire PAQ. The PAQ itself is filled by a job analyst, the person who should already be acquainted with a particular job to be analyzed. Department of Labor Dole Procedure Standardized method for rating, classifying and comparing virtually every kind of job based on data, people and things. Functional Job Analysis The method for classifying jobs similar to the Dole analysis but additionally taking into account the extent to which instructions, reasoning, Judgment and verbal facility are necessary for performing job tasks. Q7 What is job analysis and total quality management? TQM. A and S. The essential features of TQM are as follows 1. Creation of common company theme. 2. Creation of a customer centric mentality. 3. Improvement to becoming part of the job. 4. Each function reassess its purpose. 5. Improvement to becoming a continuous process. 6 communications to improve, and 7. Bureaucracy to be reduced. Q.8 What is job design and also discuss the factors affecting job design. A and S. Job design follows job analysis. Job analysis provides job-related data as well as the skills and knowledge expected of the incumbent to discharge the job. Job design then involves conscious effort to organize tasks, duties and responsibilities into a unit of work to achieve certain objectives. Human Resource Management 21. Case Study Job Analysis You are an HR manager at a telecommunication company. You are given the responsibility to design jobs and to redesign job titles so that work is performed efficiently. You have some human resource specialists. You plan to design jobs and titles from three different perspectives, the entire organization, work groups and individual employees. You decided to examine each of these perspectives and their implications for human resource management. A group of managers requested you to allow them to use people-focused job titles and to design such titles which reflect the breaking down of hierarchies and people barriers. Some examples of the titles that they have proposed include welfare leader, people developer, career promoter, employee relations specialist, etc. They also suggested that C companies should use generic job titles in order to minimize the differences between employees that arise due to differences in rank, states, experience and salary levels. You decided to discuss this proposal with your team members and HR specialists. 22. Chapter 3. Training and Development. Q.1 What is training? Explain a role of training. A and S The term training refers to the acquisition of knowledge, skills, and competencies as a result of the teaching of vocational or practical skills and knowledge that relate to specific useful competencies. To make proficient with specialized instruction and practice. Meaning, it is a learning process that involves the acquisition of knowledge, sharpening of skills, concepts, rules or changing of attitudes and behaviors to enhance the performance of employees. Training is activity leading to skilled behavior. Asterisk it's not what you want in life.
but it knows how to reach it. Asterisk it's not where you want to go, but it knows how to get there. Asterisk it's not how high you want to rise, but it knows how to take off. Asterisk it may not be quite the outcome you were aiming for, but it will be an outcome. Asterisk it's not what you dream of doing, but it's having the knowledge to do it. Asterisk it's not a set of goals, but it's more like a vision. Asterisk it's not the goal you set, but it's what you need to achieve it. Training is about knowing where you are. Stand. No matter how good or bad the current situation looks at present, and where you will be after some point of time. Training is about the acquisition of knowledge, skills, and abilities KSA through professional development. Q.2 Explain the concept of training and development with reference to its objectives. The NS training and development is a subsystem of an organization. It ensures that randomness is reduced and learning or behavioral change takes place in structured format. Traditional and modern approach of training and DEVL opinion. Human resource management. 23. Traditional approach. Most of the organizations before never used to believe in training. They were holding the traditional view that managers are born and not made. There were also some views that training is a very costly affair and not worth. Organizations used to believe more in executive hinging. But now the scenario seems to be changing. The modern approach of training and development is that Indian organizations have realized the importance of corporate training. Training is now considered as more of retention tool than a cost. The training system in Indian industry has been changed to create a smarter workforce and yield the best results training and development objectives. The principal objective of training and development division is to make sure the availability of a skilled and willing workforce to an organization. In addition to that, there are four other objectives, individual, organizational, functional, and societal. Individual objectives, help employees in achieving their personal goals, W. Hitch in turn, enhances the individual contribution to an organization. Organizational objectives, assist the organization with its primary objective by bringing individual effectiveness. Functional objectives, maintain the department's contribution at a level suitable to the organization's needs. Societal objectives, Ensure that an organization is ethically and socially responsible to the needs and challenges of the society. Q.3 What you and they are stand by training need assessment. How do you analysis need of training? The NS. A training needs assessment or training needs analysis is the systematic method of determining if a training need exists and if it does, what training is required to fill the gap between the standard and the actual performance of the employee. Therefore, training needs analysis is systematic method of determining performance discrepancies cause the s of performance discrepancies reasons to conduct training needs analysis identify the deficiencies determine whether employees lack ksasb benchmark for evaluation of training makes sure training is provided to the right people increases the motivation of training training needs equals job and organizational requirements employee specifications 24 training needs can be identified through identifying the organizational needs based on one Organizational analysis. This includes analysis of objectives, resource utilization, environments, canning, and organizational climate. Organizational strengths and weakness in different areas like accidents, excessive scrap, frequent breakage of machinery, excessive labor turnover, market share, and other marketing areas, quality and quantity of the output, production schedule, raw materials, and other production areas, personnel, finance, etc. 2. Department analysis. Department strength and weakness including special problems of the department or a common problem of a group of employees like acquiring skills and knowledge in operating computers by accounting personnel. 3. Job role analysis. This includes study of jobs slash roles, design of jobs due to changes, job enlargement and job enrichment etc. 4. Manpower analysis. Individual strengths and weakness in the areas of job knowledge, skills etc. Individual training needs. Q.4 ANS Group Training Needs Organizational Training Needs How Training Plays an Important Role in Organization Importance of Training is Optimum Utilization of Human Resources Training and Development Helps in Optimizing the Utilization of Human Resource that Further Helps the Employee to Achieve the Organizational Goals as Well as Their Individual Goals Development of Human Resources Training and development helps to provide an opportunity and broad structure for the development of human resources technical and behavioral skills in an organization. It also helps the employees in attaining personal growth.
Development of skills of employees. Training and development helps in increasing the job knowledge and skills of employees at each level. It helps to expand the horizons human intellect and an overall personality of the employees. Productivity. Training and development helps in increasing the productivity of the employees that helps the organization further to achieve its long-term goal. Human Resource Management 25. Team Spirit Training and development helps in inculcating the sense of team work, team spirit, and inter-team collaborations. It helps in inculcating the zeal to learn within the employee's organization culture. Training and development helps to develop and improve the organizational health culture and effectiveness. It helps in creating the learning culture within the organization organization climate. Training and development helps building the positive perception and feeling about the organization. The employees get these feelings from leaders, subordinates, and peers. Quality, training and development helps in improving upon the quality of work and work, life. Healthy work environment, training and development helps in creating the healthy working environment. It helps to build good employees relationship so that individual goals aligns with organizational goal. Health and safety. Training and development helps in improving the health and safety of the organization thus preventing obsolescence. Mora. Lean. Training and development helps in improving the morale of the workforce. Image. Training and development helps in creating a better corporate image. Profitability. Training and development leads to improved profitability and more positive attitudes towards profit orientation. Training and development aids in organizational development i.e. organization gets more effective decision making and problem solving. It helps in understanding and carrying out organizational policies. Training and development helps in developing leadership skills, motivation, loyalty, better attitudes, and other aspects that successful workers and managers usually display. Q.5ANS What are training methods? There are two methods of training which are as 1. On the job methods 2. Off the job methods I on the job methods OJD1. On the job training, it is the responsibility of supervisors and managers to utilize available resources to train, qualify, and develop their employees. On the job training OJD is one of the best trod by any methods because it is planned, organized, and conducted at the employee's worksite. OJD will generally be the primary method used for broadening employee skills and increasing productivity. It is particularly appropriate for developing proficiency skills unique to an employee's job, especially 26 jobs that are relatively easy to learn and require locally owned equipment and facilities. Morale, productivity, and professionalism will normally be high in those organizations that employ the sound OJD program. An analysis of the major job requirements identified in the position description and performance plan and relocate knowledges, skills, and abilities form the basis for setting up an OJD plan. To be most effective, an OJD plan should include the subject to be covered, number of hours, estimated completion date, and method by which the training will be evaluated to have a successful OJD program. Supervisors need to assign the coach to each employee involved in OJD. It is the responsibility of the coach to plan training carefully and conduct it effectively. Various on the job training method include I job instruction training JIT job instruction training JIT is a logical outgrowth of job hazard analysis. It is a proven technique for teaching new skills and safe, healthful work habits faster and more effectively. All new employees and those transferred to new jobs should receive JIT. One of the first steps is trainer selection, preferably a supervisor or a skilled person within the department. Regardless of who is selected, the trainer should Know the job in question thoroughly have leadership skills have a desire to teach others be friendly and cooperative have a professional attitude toward the job and other employees II. Vestibule Training Training Center In the early 1800s, factory schools were created due to the Industrial Revolution, in which workers were trained in classrooms within the factory walls. The apprentice system was inadequate due to the number of learners that had to be trained as the machines of the Industrial Revolution increased the ability of the factory to produce goods. The factory owners needed trained workers quickly because there was a large demand for the produced goods. Towards the end of the 1800s, the method that combined the benefits of the classroom WFTH E benefits of on-the-job training, called vestibule training, became a popular form of training. The classroom was located as close as conditions allowed to the department for which the workers 
Human Resource Management. 27. Were being trained. It was furnished with the same machines as used in production. There were normally 6 to 10 workers per trainer, who were skilled workers or supervisors from the company. III Doc Simulation Training. Technical companies that are required to train employees on dangerous or expensive equipment are most likely to benefit from simulation-based training. Simulations allow the user to observe the impact of their choices without the outcomes having any impact on the real operation. Trainees can learn how to respond to emergencies, how individual actions and decisions affect entire processes, and how to operate complex pieces of equipment. E.g. Figure 1. Simulated Airplane Cockpit the airplane cockpit simulation takes on a new approach to simulation training. The user has the opportunity to observe how all the components of the cockpit work together. This approach allows the user to gain the perspective of the interactions and correlations between the numerous components contained in an airplane cockpit. E.g. 28. 1. Demonstration and examples. This method is a visual display of how something works or how to do something. As an example. Trainer shows the trainees how to perform or how to do the tasks of the job. In order to be more effective, demonstration method should be should be accompanied by the discussion or lecture method. To carry out an effective demonstration, a trainer first prepares the lesson plan by breaking the task to be performed into smaller modules, easily learned parts. Then, the trainer sequentially organizes those modules and prepares an explanation for why that part is required. While performing the demonstration, Trainer demonstrates the task by describing how to do, while doing, helps the focusing their attention on critical aspects of the task, tells the trainees what you will be doing so they understand what you will be showing them, explains why it should be carried out in that way. The difference between the lecture method and the demonstration method is the level of involvement of the T. Rainy. In the lecture method, the more the trainee is involved, the more learning will occur. The financial costs that occur in the demonstration method are as follows. Cost of training facility for the program Cost of materials that facilitate training food, travel, lodging for the trainees and the trainers Compensation of time spent in training to trainers and trainees. Human resource management costs related to creating content. Material costs related to the organization of the training. 29. After completing the demonstration the trainer provides feedback, both positive and or negative. Give the trainee the opportunity to do the task and describe what he is doing and why. 2. Apprenticeship. A major part of training time is spent on the on-the-job productive work. Each apprenticeship is given a program of assignments according to predetermined schedules which provides for efficient training in trade skills. This method is appropriate for training in crafts, trades, and technical areas, especially when proficiency in a job is the result of a relatively long training or apprenticeship period, e.g., job of a craftsman, the printer, the tool maker, and a mechanic, etc. 2. Off-the-job methods. 1. Lecturers or classroom instructions lectures are regarding as one of the simplest ways of imparting knowledge to the trainees, especially when facts, or principles, attitudes, theories and problem-solving abilities are to be taught. Lectures are formal organized talks by the training specialist, the formal superior or other individual specific topics. The lecture method can be used for very large groups which are to be trained within a short time, thus reducing the cost per trainee. Lectures are essential when it is a question of imparting technical or special information of a complex nature. 2. Conference method. The conference training method is a good problem-solving approach. The group considers a specific problem or issue and they work to reach agreement on statements or solutions. Pros, there is a lot of trainee participation. The trainees build consensus and the trainer can use several methods lecture, panel, and seminar to keep sessions interesting. Cons, it can be diff. Cycle to control a group. Opinions generated at the conference may differ from the manager's ideas, causing conflict. 3. Seminar. Seminars often combine several group methods, lectures, discussions, conferences, demonstrations. 30 pros, group members are involved in the training. The trainer can use many group methods as part of the seminar activity. Cons, planning is time consuming. The trainer must have skill in conducting the seminar. More time is needed to conduct the seminar than is needed for many other methods for role playing during a role play.
the trainees assume roles and act out situations connected to the learning concepts. It is good for customer service and sales training. Pros, trainees can learn possible results of certain behaviors in a classroom situation. They get an opportunity to practice people skills. It is possible to experiment with many different approaches to a situation without alienating any actual customers. Cons, a lot of time is spent making a single point. Trainers must be skilled and creative in helping the class learn from the situation. In some role play situations, only a few people get to practice while others watch. 5. T Group T Group training is a technique of off-the-job training methods. That is, a group experience designed to provide maximum opportunity for the individuals to expose their behavior, give and take feedback and experience new behavior and develop awareness about self and others. The T-group training is also known as several names such as sensitivity training, action training, human capacity movement, group dynamics, and awareness expertise and as forth. This training involves development techniques to attempt to increase or improve human sensitivity and awareness. The goal of this training is to helping trainees to improve and participate in human affairs. The T group training enables trainee to understand themselves and others, change their attitude towards self, others and group's role, increase their interpersonal skills and provide organizational improvement as groups rather than individuals. In this training, the numbers of trainees should be limited to 10 to 15 persons so that regular interaction could happen throughout the training program. Usually there is no leader. No plan, bed agenda and stated goal. The trainees can be given any assignment like case study, role play etc. that leads the group interaction. The participants would be encouraged to be thoughtful and understanding towards the feeling of others. The trainees should feel secure to express their personal feeling and reactions to what happening in the group and understand the other's behavior and feelings. The emphasis is on face-to-face -face interaction. Human resource management merits of T group training 1. The trainee learn more about themselves, especially their weakness and emotions, too. They understand that how they react to others and how others react to them, 3. They discover how the groups work and identify human relation problems, 31. 4. Find out how to behave more effectively in interpersonal relationship and manage people through means rather than power, 5. Develop more capable and genuine relations in which feelings are expressed openly, 6. Confront interpersonal problems directly to find out solution instead of avoiding them. After training, trainees usually become more sensitive to others and open. Such training can also result in improved performance and increased company profit. The demerits T group training 1. During the training, the trainer often creates stressful situation. In such situation, the training may do a job of tearing apart people instead of bringing them together. 2. The changes trainees acquire during the training are tend to face out when trainee returns to see insensitive environment of workplace. 3. This training may make the management trainee as sensitive towards others that they become unwilling to take necessary hard decisions. 4. T group training proved less effective when it is applied by the technical profess. Pional. 5. Such training may make people frustrated and upset as many stressful situations are created during this technique. Some basic points to implement the T-group training. 1. T-group training is more suitable for develop organic organization. If such openness and flexible organizational structure is not available, this training is not appropriate. 2. The participants should be selected on the basis of their emotional stability and anxiety tolerance. 3. The participation should be strictly voluntary. 30-4. The trainees should know in advance that what sort of training they are going to receive. 5. The transfer of learning back to the organization should be ensured. 6. In basket method, in basket technique, it provides trainees with a log of written text or information and requests, such as memos, messages, and reports, which would be handled by manager, engineer, reporting officer and administrator. Procedure of the in basket technique, in this technique, Trainee is given some information about a role to be played such as description, responsibilities, general context about a role. The trainee is then given the log of materials that make up the NBASKT and asked to respond to materials within a particular time period. After all the trainees complete NBASKT, a discussion with the trainer takes place. 
In this discussion the trainee describes the justification for the decisions. The trainer then provides feedback, reinforcing decisions made suitably or encouraging the trainee to increase alternatives for those made unsuitably. A variation on the technique is to run multiple, simultaneous in baskets in which each trainee receives a different organized set of information. It is important that trainees must communicate with each other to accumulate the entire information required to make a suitable decision. This technique focuses on building decision-making skills with SES and develops knowledge, skills and attitudes KSAs develops of communication and interpersonal skills develops procedural knowledge develops strategic knowledge. Human Resource Management 33. 7. Incident Method This method was developed by Paul Pickers. It aims to develop the training in the areas of intellectual ability, practical judgment and social awareness. Under this method each employee developed in a group process. Incidents are prepared on the basis of actual situations which happened in different organizations. Each employee in the training group is asked to study the incident and to make short-term decisions in a role of a person who is to cope with the incident in the actual situation. Later, the group studies and discusses the incident and takes decisions relating to incident, based on the group interaction and decisions taken by each member. Thus. This method is similar to a combination of case method and in-basket method. 8. Syndicate method. Syndicate is a group of individuals or organizations combined or making a joint effort to undertake some specific duty or carry out specific transactions or negotiations. It is not actually one group that constitutes the components of syndic. 8. Method. This method is suitable for learning at a higher level. Therefore, this method was experimented found useful and widely used in teaching, learning situations, especially in top-level management training. Q6ANS His training evaluation is important. Explain Evaluation of a training program Vital aspect of any sort of evaluation is its effect on the person being evaluated. 30 for feedback is essential for people to know how they are progressing, and also, evaluation is crucial to the learner's confidence too. And since people's commitment to learning relies so heavily on confidence and a belief that the learning is achievable, the way that tests and assessments are designed and managed, and results presented back to the learners, is a very important part of the learning and development process. People can be switched off the whole idea of learning and development very quickly if they receive only negative critical test results and feedback. Always look for positives and negative results. Encourage and support. Don't criticize without adding some positives, and certainly never focus on failure, or that's just what you'll produce. This is a much overlooked factor in all sorts of evaluation and testing, and since this element is not typically included within evaluation and assessment tools the points is emphasized point loud and clear here. So always remember, evaluation is not just for the trainer or teacher or organization or policy makers. Evaluation is absolutely vital for the learner too which is perhaps the most important reason of all for evaluating people properly, fairly, and with as much encouragement as the situation allows. Training Evaluation The process of examining the training program is called training evaluation. Training evaluation checks whether training has had the desired effect. Training evaluation ensures that whether candidates are able to implement their learning in their respective workplaces, or to the regular work routines. Purposes of Training Evaluation The five main purposes of training evaluation are Feedback It helps in giving feedback to the candidates by defining the objectives and linking it to learning outcomes. Research It helps in ascertaining the relationship between acquired knowledge, transfer of knowledge at the workplace, and training control. It helps in controlling the training program because if the training is not effective, then it can be dealt with accordingly. Now our games, at times. The top management higher authoritative employee uses the evaluative data to manipulate it for their own benefits. Human Resource Management 35. In TR Vention, it helps in determining that whether the actual outcomes are aligned with the expected outcomes. Process of Training Evaluation Before training, the learner's skills and knowledge are assessed before the training program. During the start of training. Candidates generally perceive it as a waste of resources because at most of the times candidates are unaware of the objectives and learning outcomes of the program. Once aware, they are asked to give their opinions on the methods used and whether those methods confirm to the candidates' preferences and learning style. 36. During training, 
it is the phase at which instruction is started. This phase usually consists of short tests at regular intervals after training. It is the phase when learners' skills and knowledge are assessed again to measure the effectiveness of the training. This phase is designed to determine whether training has had the desired effect at individual department and organizational levels. There are various evaluation techniques for this phase. Techniques of evaluation The various methods of training evaluation are 1. Observation 2. Questionnaire 3. Interview for Self Diaries 5. Self Recording of Specific Incidents Case Study. Nestle Training and Development Introduction Nestle is today the world's leading food company, with a 135 YEAR history and operations in virtually every country in the world. Nestle's principal assets are not office buildings, factories, or even brands. Rather, it is the fact that they are a global organization comprised of many nationalities, religions, and ethnic backgrounds all work together in one single unifying corporate culture. Training programs at Nestle The willingness to learn is therefore an essential condition to be employed by Nestle. First and foremost, training is done on the job. Guiding and coaching is part of the responsibility of each manager and is crucial to make each one progress in his slash her position. Formal training programs are generally purpose-oriented and designed to improve relevant skills and competencies. Therefore they are proposed in the framework of individual development programs and not as a reward. Light racy training Most of Nestle's people development programs assume a good basic education on the part of employees. However, in a number of countries, we have decided to offer employees the opportunity to upgrade their essential literacy skills. The number of Nestle companies have Human Resource Management 37. Therefore set up special programs for those who for one reason or another, missed a large part of their elementary schooling. In TRN National Training Nestle's success in growing local companies in each country has been highly influenced by the functioning of its international training center, located near our company's corporate headquarters in Switzerland. For over 30 years, the Right Rain International Training Center has brought together managers from around the world to learn from senior Nestle managers and from each other. Conclusion Nestle's overarching principle is that each employee should have the opportunity to develop to the maximum of his or her potential. Nestle do this because they believe it pays off in the long run in their business results, and that sustainable long-term relationships with highly competent people and with the communities where they operate enhance their ability to make consistent profits. It is important to give people the opportunities for life, long learning as at Nestle that all employees are called upon to upgrade their skills in a fast-changing world. By offering opportunities to develop, they not only enrich themselves as a company, they also make themselves individually more autonomous, confident, and, in turn, more employable and open to new positions within a company. Enhancing this virtuous circle is the ultimate goal of their training efforts at many different levels through the thousands of training programs they run each year. 38. Chapter 4. Performance Measurement and Performance Appraisal. Q.1 Explain the concept of performance measurement and also the challenges associated with it. A and S. Performance measurement can be best understood through considering the definitions of the words performance and measurement according to the Baldrige criteria. Performance refers to output results and their outcomes obtained from processes, products, and services that permit evaluation and comparison relative to goals, standards, past results, and other organizations. Performance can be expressed in non-financial and financial terms. Measurement refers to numerical information that quantifies input, output, and performance dimensions of processes, products, services, and the overall organization outcomes. Performance measures might be simple derived from one measurement or composite. The challenge for organizations today is how to match and align performance measures with business strategy, structures and corporate culture, the type and number of measures to use. The balance between the merits and costs though. F. Introducing these measures, and how to deploy the measures so that the results are used and acted upon. Who uses performance measurement? All organizations measure performance to some extent. However, there is a large disparity among organizations in terms of which performance measures are used with many primarily focusing on financial measures. There has however, been a general move away from financial measurement since the early 1980s. This was accelerated in the 1990s and 2000s by the worldwide acceptance of business excellence models and performance measurement frameworks that address all stakeholders' needs. Human Resource Management 
39. Performance measurement is one of the cornerstones of business excellence. Business excellence models encourage the use of performance measures, but in addition and more importantly, they consider the design of performance measurement systems to ensure that measures are aligned to strategy, and that the system is working effectively in monitoring, communicating, and driving performance. Common challenges associated with the performance measurement approach The performance measurement revolution has seen a move away from the problems of past measurement systems. Five common features of outdated performance measurement systems were Dominant financial or other backward looking indicators failure to measure all the factors that create value little account taken up asset creation and growth poor measurement of innovation learning and change the concentration on immediate rather than long-term goals the focus in performance measurement is now on achieving a balanced framework that addresses the issues described above examples of these new frameworks are Kaplan and Norton's balanced scorecard Scandiger's navigator model and the performance prism Others recommend that the results sections of business excellence models should be used to generate a balanced set of performance measures. There are a number of challenges that are faced when designing an effective performance measurement system. These include the following, how to measure non-financial performance, what measures to choose and why, how to use them, what to do with the results, who should be responsible for using the results, how and to whom. To communicate the results the resources needed to consider the above and design and deploy the measurement system. 40 There are other major requirements that an organization needs to consider before an effective performance measurement system can be designed or installed. Apart from lower level measures that may be vital for the operation of processes, all measures need to be chosen to support the attainment of specific performance or behavior identified by the organization's leaders as important or necessary to work towards the organizational goals. This being the case, there must be clearly defined goals slash objectives and strategies chosen to reach them before measures can be chosen to support their attainment. Similarly the key processes, drivers of performance, and the core competencies required by employees need to be identified before effective performance measurement can be achieved. Q.2 What you and they are stand by performance appraisal. Explain the approaches of performance appraisal. They and us people differ in their abilities and their aptitudes. There is always some difference between the quality and quantity of the same word. K on the same job being done by two different people. Therefore, performance management and performance appraisal is necessary to understand each employee's abilities, competencies and relative merit and work for the organization. Performance appraisal rates the employees in terms of their performance. Performance appraisals are widely used in the society. The history of performance appraisal can be dated back to the 20th century and then to the Second World War when the merit rating was used for the first time. An employer evaluating their employees is a very old concept. Performance appraisals are an indispensable part of performance measurement. Performance appraisal is necessary to measure the performance of the employees and the organization to check the progress towards the desired goals and aims. Approaches to performance development or methods of performance appraisal. Performance appraisal traditional approach. Traditionally, performance appraisal has been used as just a method for determining and justifying the salaries of the employees. Then it began to be used a tool for determining rewards arise in the pay and punishments are cut in the pay for the past performance of the employees. This approach was a past-oriented approach which focused only on the past performance of the employees i.e. during a past specified period of time. This approach did not consider the developmental aspects of the employee's performance i.e. his training and development needs or career developmental possibilities. The primary concern of the traditional approach is to judge the performance of the organization as a whole by the past performances of its employees. Human resource management therefore, this approach is also called as the overall approach. In 1950s the performance appraisal was recognized as a complete system in itself and the modern approach to performance appraisal was developed. 41. Performance Appraisal Modern Approach The modern approach to performance development has made the performance appraisal process more formal and structured. Now, the performance appraisal is taken as a tool to identify better performing employees from others, employees' training needs, career development paths, rewards and bonuses and their promotions to the next levels. Appraisals have become a continuous and periodic activity in the organizations. The results of performance appraisals are used to take various other HR decisions like promotions, demotions, transfers, training and development, reward outcomes. 
The modern approach to performance appraisals includes a feedback process that helps to strengthen the relationships between superiors and subordinates and improve communication throughout the organization. The modern approach to performance appraisal is a future-oriented approach and is developmental in nature. This recognizes employees as individuals and focuses on their development. The various methods, DS and techniques used for performance appraisal can be categorized as the following traditional and modern methods. 42. Traditional Methods of Performance Appraisal 1. Essay Appraisal Method This traditional form of appraisal, also known as free-form method involves the description of Human Resource Management 43. The Performance of an Employee by His Superior The description is an evaluation of the performance of any individual based on the facts and low F includes examples and evidences to support the information. A major drawback of the method is the inseparability of the bias of the evaluator. 2. Straight Ranking Method This is one of the oldest and simplest techniques of performance appraisal. In this method, the appraiser ranks the employees from the best to the poorest on the basis of their overall performance. It is quite useful for a comparative evaluation. 3. Paired Comparison The better technique of comparison than the straight ranking method, this method compares each employee with all others in the group, one at a time. After all the comparisons on the basis of the overall comparisons, the employees are given the final rankings. 4. Critical Incidence Methods In this method of performance appraisal, the evaluator rates the employee on the basis of critical events and how the employee behaved during those in silence. It includes both negative and positive points. The drawback of this method is that the supervisor has to know down the critical incidents and the employee's behavior as and when they occur. 5. Field Review In this method, the senior member of the HR department or a training officer discusses and interviews the supervisors to evaluate and rate their respective subordinates. A major drawback of this method is that it is a very time-consuming method. But this method helps to reduce the superior's personal bias. 6. Checklist Method The rater is given a checklist of the descriptions of the behavior of the employees on job. The checklist contains a list of statements on the basis of which the rater describes the on-the-job performance of the employees. 7. Graphic Rating Scale In this method, an employee's quality and quantity of work is assessed I am a graphic scale indicating different degrees of a particular trait. The factors taken into consideration include both the personal characteristics and characteristics yes, related to the on-the-job performance of the 44 employees. For example, a trait like job knowledge may be judged on a range of average, above average, outstanding or unsatisfactory. 8. Forced Distribution To eliminate the element of bias from the rater's ratings. The evaluator is asked to distribute the employees in some fixed categories of ratings like on a normal distribution curve. The rater chooses the appropriate fit for the categories on his own discretion. Modern Appraisal Methods 1. MBO The concept of management by objectives MBO was first given by Peter Drucker in 1954. It can be defined as a process whereby the employees and the superiors come together to identify common goals. The employees set their goals to be achieved the standards to be taken as the criteria for measurement of their performance and contribution and deciding the course of action to be followed. The essence of MBO is participative goal setting, choosing course of action and decision making. An important part of the MBO is the measurement and the comparison of the employee's actual performance with the standard RDS set. Ideally, when employees themselves have been involved with the goal setting and the chosen OSING the course of action to be followed by them they are more likely to fulfill their responsibilities. The MBO Process Human Resource Management 45. Reward Management Reward management involves the analysis and effective control of employee remuneration and covers salary and all benefits. It assesses the nature and extent of rewards and the way they are delivered as well as considering their effect on both the organization and staff. Cornwell Consultants take a holistic approach to reward management treating every element of reward as an investment. We assist organizations to review each part of reward to determine its purpose and organizations return on investment the most appropriate areas for investment to. 360 degree appraisal. 360 degree feedback is an evaluation method that incorporates feedback from the worker, his slash her peers, superiors, subordinates, and customers. Results of these confidential surveys are tabulated and shared with the worker usually by the manager. 
Interpretation of the results. Trends and themes are 46. Discussed as part of the feedback. The primary reason to use this full circle of confidential reviews is to provide the worker with information about his slash her performance from multiple perspectives. From this feedback, the worker is able to set goals for self-development which will advance their career and benefit the organization. With 360 degree feedback, the worker is central to the evaluation process and the ultimate goal is to improve individual performance within the organization. Under ideal circumstances, 360 degree feedback is used as an assessment for personal development rather than evaluation. 3. Assessment Centers This technique was first developed in USA and UK in 1943. An assessment center is a central location where managers may come together to have their participation in job-related exercises evaluated by trained observers. It is more focused on observation of behaviors across a series of select exercises or work samples. Assessors are requested to participate in in-basket exercises, work groups, computer simulations, role-playing and other similar activities which require same attributes for successful performance in actual job. The characteristics assessed in assessment center can be assertiveness, persuasive ability, communicating ability, planning and organizational ability, self-confidence, resistance to stress, energy level, decision-making, sensitivity to feelings, administrative ability, creativity and mental alertness etc. An assessment center for performance appraisal of an employee typically includes social slash informal events. An assessment center has a group of participants and all so a few assessors which gives a chance to the employees to socialize with a variety of people and also to share information and know more about the organization. Human Resource Management 47. Information Sessions Information sessions are also a part of the assessment centers. They provide information to the employees about the organization, their roles and responsibilities, the activities and the procedures etc. Assignments Assignments in assessment centers include various tests and exercises which are specially designed to assess the competencies and the potential of the employees. These include various interviews, psychometric tests, management games etc. All these assignments are focused at the target job. For behaviorally anchored rating scales, statements of effective and ineffective behaviors determine the points. They are said to be behaviorally anchored. The rater is supposed to say which behavior describes the employee performance. Advantages helps overcome rating errors. Disadvantages suffers from distortions inherent in most rating techniques. Behaviorally anchored rating scales bars is a relatively new technique which combines the graphic rating scale and critical incidence meet. Thug. It consists of predetermined critical areas of job payoff experiments or sets of behavioral statements describing important job performance qualities as good or bad or e.g. the qualities like interpersonal relationships, adaptability and reliability, job knowledge etc. These statements are developed from critical incidents. In this method, an employee's actual job behavior is judged against the desired behavior by recording and comparing the behavior with bars. Developing and practicing bars requires expert knowledge. 5. Human Resource Accounting Method Human resources are valuable assets for every organization. Human Resource Accounting Method tries to find the relative worth of these assets in the terms of money. In this method the performance of the employees is judged in terms of cost and contribution of the employees. The cost of employees include all the expenses incurred on them like their compensation, recruitment and selection costs induction and training costs etc. whereas their contribution include use the total value added in monetary terms. The difference between the cost and the contribution will be the performance of the employees. Ideally, the contribution of the employees should be greater than the cost incurred on them. Case Study Performance Appraisal Here is a bizarre case of performance appraisal. The pulp making unit located at Harahar in Karnataka hired 40 engineers in 1994 as management trainees. The new hires were fresh from REC, Sabrakal, and other prestigious institute ions. Obviously they were toppers in their respective branches and institutions. T. He monogeny and T. of T. He kela and T. The duplatinum edfre the kiss h po l i c y w it h r e g a r d t o p r s or mod n c e the p p r a by s l 
one zero P D R C N T O F E L L T H E M P L O Y E E S W E R E T O B E R H E E D B E L O W A V E R the G E the H E management did not want the L L B employees to be ranked forty eight high note with H standing the I R excellent performance the H E X E F E L L O N the H E T R the I N E E S the H E R a T V R S R a T E E D L L T H E for zero T R the I N E E S V E L O W V R the G E humiliated. These forty put in their papers even before their training period expired. Solving Raiders problems the best way to overcome the P O M S is T O provide try I N E into T E Raiders. At you like the anchored. The two-day trial I any in course is organized ever why year to prepare managers to handle appraisals better. Not that training is a cure all for all the ills of appraisal systems. From a practical point of view, say very L factors, include lending the extent which pot Y is related to perfect termants ratings, union pressure, TUR then over rates, TIME constraints and the need to justify ratings may be more important than training, influencing the ratings they actually give. This means that improving rag in CIS MS involves not just try any in the raters but remedying outside factors such as union pressure. In effect, training of rat PRS must help strengthen the factors that tend to improve accuracy of ratings and weaken those that lower the accuracy of the performance measurement. Human Resource Management 49 Chapter 5 Leadership and Grievance Q.1 What is Leadership? They and S. Definition, leadership is the factor that helps individuals and groups to achieve the goal. It is the process of influencing and supporting employees or others to work enthusiastically toward achieving the objectives. Leadership is the process of influencing people to direct their efforts towards the attainment of some particular goal or goals. Q. To explain the procedure of grievance. They and S. A grievance is a wrong or hardship suffered, which is the grounds of a complaint. Grievance Procedure Grievance Procedure is a formal communication between an employee and the management designed for the settlement of a grievance. The grievance procedures differ from organization to organization. 1. Open Door Policy 2. Step Ladder Policy Open Door Policy Under this policy, the agreed employee is free to meet the top executives of the organization and get his grievances redressed. Such a policy works well only in small organizations. However, in bigger organizations, top management executives are usually busy with other concerned matters of the company. Moreover, it is believed that open-door policy is suitable for executives. Operational employees may feel shy to go to top management. Step Ladder Policy Under this policy, the agreed employee has to follow a step-by-step -step procedure for getting his grievance redressed. In this procedure, whenever an employee I yes confronted with a grievance, he presents his problem to his immediate supervisor. If the employee is not satisfied with superior's decision, then he discusses his grievance with the 50 departmental head. The departmental head discusses the problem with joint grievance committees to find a solution. However, if the committee also fails to redress the grievance, then it may be referred to chief executive. If the chief executive also fails to redress the grievance, then such a grievance is referred to voluntary arbitration where the award of arbitrator is binding on both the parties. Grievance Procedure in Indian Industry The 15th session of Indian Labor Conference held in 1957 emphasized the need of an established grievance procedure for the country which would be acceptable to unions as well as to management. In the 16th session of Indian Labor Conference, the model for grievance procedure was drawn up. This model helps in creation of grievance machinery. According to it, Workers' representatives are to be elected for a department or their union is to nominate them. Management has to specify the persons in each department who are to be approached first and the departmental heads who are sup. Dose to be approached in the second step. The model grievance procedure specifies the details of all the steps that are to be followed while redressing grievances. These steps are Step 1. In the first step the grievance is to be submitted to departmental representative, who is a representative of management. He has to give his answer within 48 hours. Step 2. If the departmental representative fails to provide a solution, the agreed employee can take his grievance to head of the department, who has to give his decision within three days. Step 3. If the agreed employee is not satisfied with the decision of departmental head, 
he can take the grievance to grievance committee. The grievance committee makes its recommendations to the manager within seven days in the form of a report. The final decision of the management on the report of grievance committee must be communicated to the agreed employee within three days of the receipt of report. An appeal for revision of final decision can be made by the worker if he is not satisfied with it. The management must communicate its decision to the worker within seven days. Step 4. If the grievance still remains unsettled, the case may be referred to voluntary arbitration. Human Resource Management 51. Case Study Building a Team Leadership Training Joe is Maintenance Coordinator for a Public University Joe is responsible for all the building maintenance and physical systems on campus. He has a number of departments to accomplish the assigned workload. He has an electrical department, a plumbing department, an HVAC department, a carpentry department, and a painting department. The workload for his departments has increased in the last several years as the physical plant continues to age. Joe requested to hire additional workers, but the budget did not allow for it. It became apparent that Joe needed to find more creative ways to better utilize his current resources in order to get more accomplished. Joe had observed that his departments were not working together well, or even at all, in some cases. It was common for one department to go into a building, fix a problem, and then leave a mess for the next department coming in behind them to do their part of the work. Workers seem to think only about maximizing the output of their own department and fin pushing their 52 own work quickly, with little regard for the impact on other departments and the long-term impact on the university. Q. What could Joe do to better coordinate the work of his departments and make better use of the resources he has, so that more work can be accomplished with the limited budget? A and S. Joe could have each department select a team leader to represent them call a meeting of all team leaders, share his budget numbers with them and explain that they will be expected to work together more closely have each team leader identify what he could do to help each of the other departments continue to hold weekly meetings with team leaders so they get to know each other better, to share information, and to hear requests from each department for what they could use from others begin cross-training people in more than one trade in order to promote sharing of available workers between functions when the workload permits this human resource management. 53. Chapter 6. Discipline. Q.1 Explain Discipline. The NSDISCIPLINE is a process of dealing with job-related behavior that does not meet expected and communicated performance standards. Employee discipline is basically adherence to established norms and regulations or conformity with the accepted order of the organization. Q.2 Explain the purpose of discipline. The NS. There are various purposes of discipline such as to change behavior to encourage employees to behave sensibly at work, to inform employees preferably in writing ahead of time, what is and is not the acceptable behavior, clarity of expectations, better performance, not designed to punish or embarrass an employee, Q.3 define the disciplinary problem s, the ns, the disciplinary problems comprise of, 1, attendance related issues, 2, performance at work, 3, Dishonesty and related problems for on the job behavior 5 off the job behavior 50 for Q.4 What are the possible reasons for failure of discipline? They and S. Possible reasons for failure are as below a lack of direction from the management, B communication gap or poor communication, C excessive workload, D lack of challenge, boredom, B inadequate appreciation and recognition of work, F anxiety about the future job, Q.5 how to review an infraction slash how to make discipline more effective, A and S. In order to make discipline more effective, following points should keep into consideration. Did the employee clearly understand the rule or policy that was violated? Was the rule or policy consistently and fairly enforced by management? Did the employee know that violating the rule or policy could lead to discipline? The seriousness of the offense in terms of violating company rules of conduct or company obligations, the duration of service of an employee, the previous good or bad work record of the employee's provocation. Did the employee admit to the misconduct and apologize for his backslash her behavior? Q.6 what should be main points of good disciplinary process? They and S. A good disciplinary process should include A. Should be documented. B. Have lucid rules and regulations. C. Fair. D. Include the system of progressive penalties. Human resource management. E. Have an appeal process. 55. 
FAQ.7 What do you mean by progressive discipline? Explain its advantages. A and S. Progressive discipline is. The process features increasingly formal efforts to provide feedback to the employee, so that he or she can correct the problem. It intends to assist the employee overcome problems and satisfy job expectations. Discipline without or very less punishment. Advantages No one feels good about being punished. Forcing rules onto employees would only lead to short-term compliance. 2.8 Discuss the process of discipline. A and S. The process of discipline includes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 issue an oral reminder after informal counseling issue a formal written reminder give a one day decision making leave probation termination 56 the process the investigation stage the discipline stage case study no gambling informant says we have rules posted against gambling of course we don't enforce them against small bets and there is some card playing for money in the washroom at lunch break however we have the rules posted as a standby measure if things get out of hand. Question. Q.1 Do you agree with this foreman's approach? Human Resource Management. 57. Chapter 7. Employee Compensation. Q.1 What is compensation? A and S. The literal meaning of compensation is to counterbalance. In other words, it is remuneration an employee receives in return for his or her contribution to the organization. Q2 What are the objectives of compensation? A and S. The main objectives of compensation comprise of to achieve maximum satisfaction to the employee at the least cost to the employer. Compensation is important for morale enhancing efficiency, reduces staff turnover, attracts best employees, helps in dealing with unions. Q.3 What are the components of compensation? A and S. 58. Components of compensation. Slash. Q for what is compensation plan? A and S. Compensation plan is to 1. Develop a program outline 2. Designate an individual to oversee program design 3. Develop a compensation philosophy for Conduct a job analysis 5. Job evaluation 6. Determining grade 7. Establish grade pricing and salary range 8. Determine an appropriate salary structure. Human resource management 9. Develop a salary administration policy 10. Obtain approval of the basic salary program 11. Communicate the final program 12. Monitor the program 59. Q5 Discuss the WITRO story and BIRLA story of compensation plan. A and S. The WITRO story. We moved to individualized compensation in 1994. We believe the performance of the business and the individual will increasingly dictate compensation, increases for employees. That white pro, our compensation review for senior management happens in the last quarter of the calendar year. We have been moving towards a structure of fixed plus variable compensation. At the top management level, the fixed component is 40%. At the senior management level it is 60%. Further, we moved towards individualized compensation way back in 1994. We feel that most industries have no option but to do this on the basis of the performance of the business, the performance of the individual, the criticality of a role, and the market value and potential of the employee. The BIRLA story There's more pay at risk today. We have always been moderate in our approach to compensation. We differentiate purely on the basis of performance. And multiple compensation and incentive structures are prevalent. We are also looking at long-term incentives linked to performance. At the very senior level, our salaries are comparable to those in the West if you take the cost of living into account. There are variations across sectors. Percentage increments are higher at junior levels. Inflation and lifestyle aspirations are also strong today at the junior levels. All these factors impact compensation strategies. 60Q.6 What is career management and also explain its objectives? A and S. Career management is the lifelong process of investing resources to achieve your career goals. Career management is not a singular event but a continuing process that is necessity for adapting to the changing demands of the 21st century economy. Career management is the combination of structured planning and the active management choice of one's own professional career. The outcome of successful career management should include personal fulfillment, work-slash-life balance goal achievement and financial security.
objectives of career development systems. Fostering better communication in organization. The main objective of designing a career development system is to foster better communication within the organization as a whole. It promotes communication at all levels of organizations for example manager and employee and managers and top management. Proper communication is the lifeblood of any organization and helps in solving several big issues. Assisting with career decisions. A career development system provides employees as well as managers with helpful assistance with career decisions. They get an opportunity to assess their skills and competencies and know their goals and future aspirations. It helps them give a direction so that they can focus on achieving their long-term career goals. Better use of employees' skills. A career development system helps organization make better use of employees' skills. Since managers know their skills and competencies and therefore, can put them at a job where they will be able to produce maximum output. Setting realistic G goals. Setting realistic goals and expectations is another main objective of a career development system. It helps both employees and organization to understand what is feasible for them and how they can achieve their goals. Creating a pool of talented employees. Creating a pool of talented employees is the main objective of organizations. After all, they need to meet their staffing needs in present and future and career development system helps them fulfill their requirements. Enhancing the career satisfaction. Organizations especially design career development systems for enhancing the career satisfaction of their employees. Since they have to retain their valuable assets and prepare them for top-notch positions in future, they need to understand their career requirements and expectations from their organization. Feedback. Giving feedback on every step is also required within an organization to measure the success rate of a specific policy implemented and initiatives taken by the organization. In addition to this, it also helps managers to give feedback for employees' performance so that they can understand what is expected of them. Human Resource Management Q.7 Discuss Strategic Human Resource Management SHRM 61 AMS Strategic HRM gives direction on how to build the foundation for strategic advantage by creating an effective organizational structure and design, culture, employee value proposition, systems thinking, an appropriate communication strategy and preparing an organization for a changing landscape, which includes downturns and mergers and acquisitions. Sustainability and corporate social responsibility come within the ambit of this discipline, especially with reference to organizational values and their expression in business decision making. Strategic HRM emphasizes organizational codes of ethics, managing the societal impact of business decisions, philanthropy and a role of the human resource professional in improving the quality of life of employees, their families and the community at large. A strategic approach to human resource management. 62. Client Case Study GM Casey Engaging Employees in Career Planning and Development The Graduate Management Admissions Council GM Casey has very high employee retention and well-engaged employees who are committed to GM Casey's success. After a rapid growth period, the leadership at GM Casey wanted to evaluate their existing career paths, promotions, and development processes. The ultimate goal was to develop programs that would keep employees engaged and committed to their own careers and to the organization. The springboard team was tasked with, first of all, identifying which specific initiatives and programs would best keep employees engaged, and what employees wanted from GM Casey for their continued career development. The team conducted an extensive analysis process including a series of focus groups and individual interviews that reached out to almost 75% of all GM Casey employees. Simultaneously, the GM Casey internal team conducted a survey to gather additional information. The survey, interviews and focus groups surfaced useful details on the current and desired state around career planning slash management, professional development, promotions and career paths within GM Casey. By analyzing this data, the springboard team made a series of recommendations for new and enhanced talent management programs. We then developed several critical new tools for career planning and for employee development, including an individual development plan, a career guide for employees to consider their long-term career ambitions, and several new operating procedures, including one to provide more structure for the annual promotions process. GM Casey employees were able to use the tools to take initiative for their own development while experiencing, firsthand, 
GM Hasey's investment in their career growth. Meanwhile GM Hasey's leadership and human resources team had consistent processes to help set expectations regarding career paths and promotions across the organization. Human Resource Management 63. Key Terms and Terminologies 1. Human Resource Management HRM is the process of managing people in organizations in a structured and thorough manner. 2. Human Resource Planning the process by which an organization should move from its current manpower position to its desired manpower position. 3. Human Resource Development is a framework for the expansion of human capital within an organization through the development of both the organization and the individual to achieve performance improvement. 4. Delphi Technique In this method, the views of different experts related to the industry are taken into consideration and then a consensus about the human resource requirement is arrived at. Delphi technique is used primarily to assess long-term needs of human resource. 5. Job analysis. Job analysis refers to various methodologies for analyzing the requirements of a job. 6. Job design. Follows job analysis. Job analysis provides job-related data as well as the skills and knowledge expected of the incumbent to discharge the job. Job design then involves conscious effort to organize tasks duties and responsibilities into a unit of work to achieve certain objectives. 7. Job Description A list of jobs duties, responsibilities, reporting relationships, working environment and supervisory responsibility. 8. Job Specification A list of jobs human requirements, that is requisite education, skills, personality and so on. 9. Training Refers to the acquisition of knowledge, skills, and competencies as a result of the teaching of vocational or practical skills and they know that relate to specific useful competencies. 10. Total Quality Management TQM Total Quality Management TQM is a management approach to long-term success through customer satisfaction. 11. Performance Measurement is a process for collecting and reporting information regarding the performance of an individual, group or organizations. It can involve looking at process flash strategies in place as well as whether outcomes are in line with what was intended or should have been achieved. 12. Performance appraisal is the systematic evaluation of the performance of employees and to understand the abilities of a person for further growth and development. 64. 13. Leadership is the process of influencing people to direct their efforts towards the attainment of some particular goal or goals. 14. Grievance. A grievance is a wrong or hardship suffered which is the grounds of a complaint. 15. Discipline is a process of dealing with job-related behavior that does not meet expected and communicated performance standards. 16. Compensation It is remuneration that an employee receives in return for her contribution to the organization. His or 17. Career management is the combination of structured planning and the active management choice of one's own professional career. The outcome of successful career management should include personal fulfillment, work-slash-life balance, goal achievement and financial security. 18. Strategic Human Resource Management is the proactive management of people. It requires thinking ahead and planning ways for a company to better meet the needs of its employees and for the employees to better meet the needs of the company. Human Resource Management 65. Bibliography S. No. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Name of the book. Human Resource Management Human Resource Management Human Resource Management Human Resource Planning Human Resource Planning. Name of the author. G.S. Suda Robert L. Mathis John H. Jackson Deepak Kumar Bhattacharya Drive Pale U. P. and Mishivani Mishra. 66. M.B.A.S.M.I.I. Main and Back Examination. July 2009. M401 Human Resource Management Time, 3 hours Total Marks, 70 Minimum Passing Marks, 28 This question paper is divided into sections. There are section A and B section A contains 6 questions out of which the candidate is required to attempt any 4 questions. Section B contains short case study slash application base. I question which is compulsory all questions are carrying equal mark use of following supporting material is permitted during examination.
mentioned in form no dot two hundred five one dot underscore 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 nil underscore 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 two dot underscore 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 nil underscore 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 Score underscore 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 section. The Q.1 managing people is the heart and essence of being a manager. Explain this statement and describe the meaning and characteristics of human resource management. A and S. Human resource management HRM or simply HR is the management of an organization's workforce or human resources. It is responsible for the attraction, selection, training, assessment, and rewarding of employees while also overseeing organizational leadership and culture, and ensuring compliance with employment and labor laws. In circumstances where employees desire and are legally authorized to hold a collective bargaining agreement, HR will typically also serve as the company's primary liaison with the employee's representatives. In other words, HRM is the process of managing people in organizations in a structured and thorough manner. HRM encompasses the management of people in organizations from a macro perspective i.e. managing people in the form of a collective relationship between management and employees. This approach focuses on the objectives and outcomes of the HRM function. Characteristics of Human Resource Management 1. It is only the functional area which is concerned with the human resource as well as functional areas such as production, marketing and finance. 2. It is responsible for encouraging the employees to work hard through proper motivation. 3. Human resource management ensures right job through proper selection of employees. Human resource management 4. Human resource management ensures availability and development of right skills in the organization through efficient training and development. 5. Human resource management also includes creating job satisfaction among employees working at different levels and in different departments of the organization. 6. It includes making fair remuneration to the employees i.e. employees working in different department at same level should get same pay. 67. 2. Define human resource planning and give an overview of the process of human resource planning. A and S. B. W. Better viewed human resources planning as a process by which an organization should move from its current manpower position to its desired manpower position. Through planning management strives to have the right number and right kind of people at the right places at the right time, doing things which result in both the organization and the individual receiving maximum long-run benefit. According to Lee and C. Matt human resources planning is an integrated approach to performing the planning aspects of the personnel function in order to have a sufficient supply of adequately developed and motivated people to perform the duties and tasks required to meet organizational objectives and satisfy the individual needs and goals of organizational members. Process of Human Resource Planning 1. Analyzing the Corporate Level Strategies Human Resource Planning should start with analyzing corporate level straight. Geese which include mood expansion, diversification, mergers, acquisitions, reduction in operations, technology to be used, method of production etc. Therefore human resource planning should begin with analyzing the corporate plans of the organization before setting out on fulfilling its tasks. 2. Demand forecasting. Forecasting the overall human resource requirement in accordance with the organizational plans is one of the key aspects of demand forecasting. Forecasting of quality of human resources like skills, knowledge, values and capabilities needed in addition to quantity of human resources is done through the following methods. A executive or managerial judgment. Here the managers decide the number of employees in the future. They adopt one of the three approaches mentioned below, the bottom-up approach. Here the concerned supervisors send their proposals to the top officials who compare these with the organizational plans, make necessary adjustments and finalize them. Top-down approach. Here the man agent prepares the requirements and sends the information downwards to the supervisory level who finalizes the draft and approves it. Oh, 68. Go participative approach. Here the supervisors and the management sit together and projections are made after joint consultations. B. Statistical techniques. These methods use statistical methods and mathematical techniques to forecast and predict the supply and demand of human resources in the future. 
See Ratio Trend Analysis. In this method depending on the past data regarding number of employees in each department, like production department, sales department, marketing department and workload level, etc. Ratios for manpower are estimated. Past values are plotted and extrapolated to get fairly accurate future projections. The work study method. This technique is suitable to study the correlation between volume of work and labor i.e. demand for human resources is estimated based on the workload. Work study method is more appropriate for repetitive and manual jobs when it is possible to measure work and set standards. The Delphi technique. Delphi technique is named after the Greek oracle of the city of Delphi. In this method, the views of different experts related to the industry are taken into consideration and then the consensus about the human resource requirement is arrived at. Delphi technique is used primarily to assess long-term needs of human resource. 3. Analyzing human resource supply. Every organization has two sources of supply of human resources, internal and external. Internally, human resources can be obtained for certain posts through promotions and transfers. In order to judge the internal supply of human resources in future human resource inventory or human resource audit is necessary. Human resource inventory helps in determining and evaluating the quantity of internal human resources available. Once the future internal supply is estimated, supply of external human resources is analyzed. For estimating manpower gaps, manpower gaps can be identified by comparing demand and supply forecasts. Such comparison will reveal either deficit or surplus of human resources in the future. Deficit suggests the number of persons to be recruited from outside, whereas surplus implies redundant employees to be redeployed or terminated. Ted. Employees estimated to be deficient can be trained while employees with higher, better skills may be given more enriched jobs. 5. Action Planning Once the manpower gaps are identified, plans are prepared to bridge these gaps. Plans to meet the surplus manpower may be redeployment in other departments and retrenchment. People may be persuaded to quit voluntarily through a golden handshake. Deficit can be met through recruitment, selection, transfer and promotion. In view of shortage of certain skilled employees, the organization has to take care not only of recruitment but also retention of existing employees. Hence, the organization has to plan for retaining of existing employees. 6. Modify the organizational plans. If future supply of human resources form all the external sources is estimated to be inadequate or less than the requirement, the manpower planner has to suggest to the management regarding the alterations or modifications in the organizational plans. Human Resource Management 69 7. Controlling and Review After the action plans are implemented, human resource structure and the processes should be controlled and reviewed with a view to keep them in accordance with action plans. 3. Doc explain various methods of training. They and S. There are two methods of training which are as 1. On-the-job methods 2. Off-the-job methods I on-the-job methods OJVA. On-the-job training. It is the responsibility of supervisors and managers to utilize available resources to train, qualify, and develop their employees. On-the-job training OJV is one of the best training methods because it is planned, organized, and conducted at the employee's worksite. OJV will generally be the primary method used for broadening employee skills and increasing productivity. It is particularly appropriate for developing proficiency skills unique to an employee's job, especially jobs that are relatively easy to learn and require locally owned equipment and facilities. To have a successful OJV program, supervisors need to assign a coach to each employee involved in OJV. It is the responsibility of the coach to plan training carefully and conduct it effectively. B. Job Instruction Training JIT Job Instruction Training JIT is a logical outgrowth of job hazard analysis. One of the first steps is trainer selection, preferably a supervisor or a skilled person within a department. Regardless of who is selected, the trainer should know the job in question thoroughly have leadership skills have a desire to teach others be friendly and cooperative have a professional attitude toward the job and other employees. See Da Vestibule Training Training Center. 70 Towards the end of the 1800s, the method that combined the benefits of the classroom with the benefits of on-the-job training called vestibule training, became a popular form of training. The classroom was located as close as conditions allowed to the department for which the workers were being trained. It was furnished with the same machines as used in production. 
There were normally 6 to 10 workers per trainer, who were skilled workers or supervisors from the company. D. Simulation Training Technical companies that are required to train employees on dangerous or expensive equipment are most likely to benefit from simulation-based training. Simulations allow a user to observe the impact of their choices without the outcomes having any impact on the real operation. Trainees can learn how to respond to emergencies, how individual actions and decisions affect entire processes, and how to operate complex pieces of equipment. E.g. Figure 1. Simulated Airplane Cockpit the airplane cockpit simulation takes on a new approach to simulation training. The user has the opportunity to observe how all the components of the cockpit work together. This approach allows the user to gain the perspective of the interactions and correlations between the numerous components contained in an airplane cockpit. E.g. Human Resource Management 71 One dog demonstration and examples. This method is a visual display of how something works or how to do something. As an example, trainer shows the trainees how to perform or how to do the tasks of the job. In order to be more effective, the demonstration method should be should be accompanied by the discussion or lecture method. To carry out an effective demonstration, a trainer first prepares the lesson plan by breaking the task to be performed into smaller modules, easily learned parts. Then, the trainer sequentially organizes those modules and prepares an explanation for why that part is required. While performing the demonstration, trainer demonstrates the task by describing how to do, while doing, helps the focusing their attention on critical aspects of the task, tells the trainees what you will be doing so they understand what you will be showing them, explains why it should be carried out in that way. After completing the demonstration the trainer provides feedback, both positive and or negative, give the trop. We need the opportunity to do the task and describe what he is doing and why. To dot apprenticeship, a major part of training time is spent on the on-the-job productive work. Each apprenticeship is given a program of assignments according to predetermined schedules which provides for efficient training in trade skills. This method is appropriate for training in crafts, trades, and technical areas, especially when proficiency in a job is the result of a relatively long training or apprenticeship period, e.g., job of a craftsman, the printer, the tool maker, and a mechanic etc. 72 II dot off the job methods 1. Lecturers or classroom instructions lectures are regarding as one of the simplest ways of imparting knowledge to the trainees, especially when facts, or principles, attitudes, theories and problem solving abilities are to be taught. Lectures are formal organized talks by the training specialist, the formal superior or other individual specific topics. The lecture method can be used for very large groups which are to be trained within a short time thus reducing the cost per trainee. Lectures are essential when it is a question of imparting technical or special information of a complex nature. 2. Conference Method The conference training method is a good problem-solving approach. The group considers a specific problem or issue and they work to reach agreement on statements or solutions. Pros There is a lot of trainee participation. The trainees build consensus and the trainer can use several methods lecture, panel, and seminar to keep sessions interesting. Cons, it can be difficult to control a group. Opinions generated at the conference may differ from the manager's ideas, causing conflict. 3. Seminar, seminars often combine several group methods, lectures, discussions, conferences, demonstrations, pros, group members are involved in the training. The trainer can use many group methods as part of the seminar activity. Cons, planning is time consuming. The trainer must have skill in conducting the seminar. More time is needed to conduct the seminar than is needed for many other methods for role-playing. During a role-play, the trainees assume roles and act out situations connected to the learning concepts. It is good for customer service and sales training. Pros, trainees can learn possible results of certain behaviors in a classroom situation. They get an opportunity to practice people skills. It is possible to experiment with many different approaches to a situation without alienating any actual customers. Cons, a lot of time is spent making a single point. Trainers must be skilled and creative in helping the class learn from the situation. In some role play situations, only a few people get to practice while others watch. 5. T Group Human Resource Management 73 T 
Group training is a technique of off-the-job training methods. It is a group experience designed to provide maximum opportunity for the individuals to expose their behavior, give and take feedback and experience new behavior and develop awareness about self and others. The T-group training is also known as several names such as sensitivity training, action training, human capacity movement, group dynamics, and awareness expertise and as forth. 6. In basket method, in basket technique, it provides trainees with a log of written text or information and requests, such as memos, messages, and reports, which would be handled by manager, engineer, reporting officer, or administrator. Procedure of the in-basket technique In this technique, trainee is given some information of T a role to be played such as, description, responsibilities, general context about a role. The trainee is then given the log of materials that make up the NBASKT and asked to respond to materials within a particular time period. After all the trainees complete in basket, a discussion with the trainer takes place. In this discussion the trainee describes the justification for the decisions. The trainer then provides feedback, reinforcing decisions made suitably or encouraging the trainee to increase alternatives for those made unsuitably. This technique focuses on Building decision-making skills to assess and develops knowledge, skills and attitudes KSAs develops of communication and interpersonal skills develops procedural knowledge develops strategic knowledge. 74. 8. Incident Method This method was developed by Paul Pickers. It aims to develop the training in the areas of intellectual ability, practical judgment and social awareness. Under this method each employee developed in a group process. Incidents are prepared on the basis of actual situations which happened in different organizations. Each employee in the training group is asked to study the incident and to make short-term decisions in a role of a person who is to co with the incident in the actual situation. Later, the group studies and discusses the incident and takes decisions relating to incident, based on the group interaction and decisions taken by each member. Thus. This method is similar to a combination of case method and in-basket method. 9. Syndicate method. Syndicate is a group of individuals or organizations combined or making a joint effort to undertake some specific duty or carry out specific transactions or negotiations. It is not actually one group that constitutes the components of syndic. 8. Method. This method is suitable for learning at a higher level. Therefore, this method was experimented found useful and widely used in teaching, learning situations, especially in top-level management training. 14.1. Write short notes on any two, I-3600 appraisal they and S. 360 degree feedback is an evaluation method that incorporates feedback from the worker, his slash her peers, superiors, subordinates, and customers. Results of these confidential surveys are Human Resource Management 75 tabulated and shared with the worker, usually by the manager. Interpretation of the results, trends and themes are discussed as part of the feedback. The primary reason to use this full circle of confidential reviews is to provide the worker with information about his slash her performance from multiple perspectives. From this feedback, the worker is able to set goals for self-development which will advance their career and benefit the organization. With 360 degree feedback, the worker is central to the evaluation process and the ultimate goal is to improve individual performance within the organization. Under ideal circumstances, 360-degree feedback is used as an assessment for personal development rather than evaluation. IIHRD Human Resource Development The NS HRD is a framework for the expansion of human capital within an organization through the development of both the organization and the individual to achieve performance improvement. III Hot Stove Rule of Discipline The NS Without the continual support of the subordinates, no manager can get things done. But Disciplinary action against a delinquent employee is painful and generates resentment on his part. Hence, the question arises as to how to impose discipline without generating resentment. This is possible through what Douglas McGregor called the Red Hot Stove Rule which draws an analogy between touching the hot stove and undergoing discipline. According to the Red Hot Stove Rule, disciplinary action should have the following consequences. A. Burns immediately. If disciplinary action is to be taken, it must occur immediately so the individual will understand the reason for it. With the passage of time, people have the tendency to convince themselves that they are not at fault. Provides warning. 
it is very important to provide advance warning that punishment will follow unacceptable behavior. As you move closer to hot stove, you are warned by its heat that you will be burned if you touch it. Gives consistent punishment. Disciplinary action should also be consistent in that everyone who performs the same act will L be punished accordingly. As with a hot stove, each person who touches it is burned the same. Burns impersonally, disciplinary action should be impersonal. There are no favorites when this approach is followed. B. C. D. I. B. Job Enrichment A and S. Job enrichment is a type of job redesign intended to reverse the effects of tasks that are repetitive requiring little autonomy. Some of these effects are boredom, lack of flexibility, and employee dissatisfaction. Leach and Walt, 2004. The underlying principle is to expand the scope. 76. Of the job with a greater variety of tasks, vertical in nature, that require self-sufficiency. Since the goal is to give the individual exposure to tasks normally reserved for differently focused or higher positions, merely adding more of the same responsibilities related to an employee's current position is not considered job enrichment. 14.2. What do you understand by workers' participation in management? Explain the ways of workers' participation in management. They and S. The process by which subordinate employees, either individually or collectively, Become involved in one or more aspects of organizational decision-making within the enterprises in which they work. Workers' participation in management is an essential ingredient of industrial democracy. The concept of workers' participation in management is based on human relations approach to management which brought about a new set of values to labor and management. Traditionally the concept of workers' participation in management WPM refers to participation of non- managerial employees in the decision-making process of the organization. Workers' participation is also known as labor participation or employee participation in management. In Germany it is known as co-determination while in Yugoslavia it is known as self-management. The International Labor Organization has been encouraging member nations to promote the scheme of workers' participation in management. Forms of participation Different forms of participation are discussed below. Collective bargaining Collective bargaining results in collective agreements which lay down certain rules and conditions of service in an establishment. Such agreements are normally binding on the parties. Theoretically, collective bargaining is based on the principle of balance of power, but, in actual practice, each party tries to outbid the other and get maximum advantage by using, if necessary, threats and co under threats like, strikes, lockouts and other direct actions. Joint consultation, on the other hand, is a particular technique which is intended to achieve a greater degree of harmony and cooperation by emphasizing matters of common interest. Workers prefer to use the instrument of collective bargaining rather than ask for a share in management. Workers' participation in the U.S.A. has been ensured almost exclusively by means of collective agreements and their application and interpretation rather than by way of labor repair. Assentation in management. Works councils, these are exclusive bodies of employees assigned with different functions in the management of an enterprise. In West Germany, the works councils have various decision-making functions. In some countries, their role is limited only to receiving information about the enterprise. In Yugoslavia, these councils have wider decision-making powers in an enterprise like appointment, promotion, salary fixation and also major investment decisions. Human Resource Management 77 Joint management councils and committees, mainly these bodies are consultative and advisory, with decision-making being left to the top management. This system of participation is prevalent in many countries, including Britain and India. As they are consultative and advisory, neither the managements nor the workers take them seriously. Board representation. A role of a worker representative in the board of directors is essentially one of negotiating the workers' interest with the other members of the board. At times. This may result in tension and friction inside the boardroom. The effectiveness of workers' representative and the board depend upon his ability to participate in decision-making, his knowledge of the company affairs, his educational background, his lead yield of understanding and also on the number of worker representatives in the board. Workers' own ownership of enterprise, social self, management in Yugoslavia is an example of complete control of management by workers through an elected board and worky. Cars Council. Even in such a system, 
there exist two distinct managerial and operative functions with different sets of persons to perform them. The workers have the option to influence all the decisions taken at the top level. In actual practice, the board and the top management team assume a fairly independent role in taking major policy decisions for the enterprises, especially in economic matters. Levels of participation Workers' participation is possible at all levels of management. The only difference is t-hat of degree and nature of application. For instance, it may be vigorous at lower level and faint at top level. Broadly speaking there is following five levels of participation. 1. Information participation. It ensures that employees are able to receive information and express their views pertaining to the matters of general economic importance. 2. Consultative participation. Here works are consulted on the matters of employee welfare such as work safety and health. However, final decision always rests at the option of management and employees' views are only of advisory nature. 3. Associative participation. It is extension of consultative participation as management here is under moral obligation to accept and implement the unanimous decisions of the employees. 4. Administrative participation. It ensure greater share of works in discharge of managerial functions. Here, decision already taken by the management come to employees, preferably with alternatives for administration and employees have to select the best from those for implementation. 5. Decisive participation. Highest level of participation where decisions are jointly taken on the matters relation to production, welfare etc. is called decisive participation. 78. 14. 3. During one week a workman X manufactured 200 units. He received wages for a guaranteed 44 hours a week at the rate of hours.1.50 slash hour. The time allotted to produce one unit is 18 minutes. Calculate his gross wages under each of the methods. A time rate BP rate C Halsey premium plan D Rowland premium plan. 14 Section B Job analysis at Universal Manufacturers Universal Manufacturers was to recruit a large part of its workforce for its various operations. The organization was established by Ashurtosh Ghosh and Avinash Chopra. While Ghosh was an engineering graduate, Chopra had a rich experience of handling various operations in different companies. Universal needed highly talented people at all the levels of the organization structure. They hired an external human resource consultant, a partner AO for this purpose, who suggested a detailed job analysis in the firm to study manpower requirements. This would not only help select the right people for the jobs but will also provide important clues to design. The compensation package for each job position in the organization said Rao. Rao appointed two member team to study the important tasks and responsibilities associated with each job position at Universal. They analyzed the qualifications, skills, and abilities that each job holder should possess so that the company could gain optimum advantage of its manpower deployment. The team with help of Gosh who had a wide range of technical qualification and experience, determined the key result area crafts for all the jobs in organization. The crafts helped in determining the important responsibilities and deliverables of a job holder. This in turn, helped in determining the competencies required in each job. After a detailed study of the findings of the team, Rao prepared the job description and job specification for each job activity. Bases on the levels of the vacant positions in the organizational hierarchy, Rao used various sources of recruitment like newspaper advertisement, campus recruitment etc. to select people for different opening. Universal received a good response from qualified people. Rao also used the findings of the job analysis to design a compensation plan for the various sources of recruitment like newspaper advertisement campus recruitment etc. to select people for different opening. Universal received a good response from qualified people. Rao also used the finding of the job analysis to design a compensation plan for the various positions in the firm. Rao used the finding of the job analysis for various other purposes as well. Thus, Universal was benefited by the process of job analysis in more than one way. Therefore, job analysis continued to remain an ongoing process at Universal which had to constantly keep changing with the changes in the external environment. Human Resource Management Questions 79. I Universal introduced a systematic job analysis process on the advice of a partner AO. Briefly describe the various elements and stages involved in the process of job analysis. 
I.I. The results of job analysis were used to determine the selection criteria for candidates and also to design a compensation plan. How important is the job analysis for any organization? 80. Multiple choice questions. Q.1. Is the process of managing people in organizations in a structured and thorough manner? A. Human resource planning. B. Human resource management. C. Human resource development. D. All of the above is viewed as process by which an organization should move from its current manpower position to its desired manpower position. A. Human resource planning. B. Human resource management. C. Human resource development. D. All of the above. Q.3 Under this method of demand forecasting, the supervisors and the management sit together and projections are made after joint consultations. This method is known as A. Top-down approach. B. Bottom-up approach. C. Managerial judgment. D. Participative approach. Q.4 is the formal process of identifying the content of a job in terms activities involved and attributes needed to perform the work and identifies major job requirements. A. Job analysis. B. Job design. C. Job specification. D. None of the above. Q.2. Human resource management. 81. Q.5 is a list of jobs, duties, responsibilities, reporting relationships, working environment and supervisory responsibility. A. Job specification. B. Job analysis. C. Job description. D. All of the above. Q.6 personality and so on. A. Job specification. B. Job analysis. C. Job description. D. All of the above. Is a list of jobs human requirements. That is requisite education. Skills. Q.7 In this method, the details of job are obtained by the supervisors who possess extensive knowledge about a job. A. Fiery method. B. Technical conference method. C. Observation method. D. None of the above. Q.8 The essential characteristics of total quality management. TQM comprises of A. Creation of common company theme. B. Creation of a customer centric mentality. C. Improvement to becoming part of the job. D. All of the above. Q. Binet is a learning process that involves the acquisition of knowledge, sharpening of skills, concepts, rules, or changing of attitudes and behaviors to enhance the performance of employees. A. Development B. Coaching C. Training. 82 D. None of the above. Q.10 Under this method of performance appraisal the senior member of the HR department or a training officer discusses and interviews the supervisors to evaluate and rate their respective subordinates. This method is called A. Paired Comparison B. Field Review C. Critical Incident D. None of the above. Q.11 Which of the following is not a type of performance appraisal? A. Team-based appraisal B. Appraisal of managers C. Customer appraisal D. 45-degree appraisal Q.12 What is meant by RPO? A. Recruitment process outsourcing B. Retirement process outsourcing C. Recruitment process output D. Recruitment procedure outsourcing Answers 1B 2A 3D, 4A, 5C, 6A, 7B, 8D, 9C, 10B, 11D, 12A.